Hello everyone. We're going to take a look at making some basic photo corrections in Photoshop today. Uh, after all, it's called Photoshop. Uh, so we're going to uh, take a look at the basic steps to improve our, our photos. Um, and that's going to start with uh, some basic um, ideas like we've got to get the resolution correct first, get the right image size, uh, we have to take a look at the values in the image, darks and lights, uh, any color issues need to be corrected next, and then some manual fine-tuning of the image, like with tools like Dodge and Burn, to improve the contrast in places, uh, targeted areas of the, of, the, of the photo. So, I've got a photograph here uh, that I took in San Antonio at one of the missions, and uh, you can see some problems right away. Like there's um, not a whole lot of contrast in the image. Uh, there's a color cast and the thing is crooked. Um, so uh, we've got some work to do. Um, and so we're gonna start um, with uh, resolution, right? So, um, it's important to know that like where you're going with an image uh, output determines the input so if if this is an image that's going to go into a print job that's going to be printed professionally on a, on a printing press I know that my resolution needs to be uh, at least 300 usually and um, that um, you know, if I'm if I'm going to print it in house, however, I can get away with resolution as low as say 150. So uh, we need to make sure we have enough resolution and size to accomplish our goals. So first thing you're going to want to do uh, anytime you open a file up in Photoshop is go to the image menu and choose image size, right? Uh, and that's uh, Command Option I on a Mac or Control Alt I on a PC. So in this dialog box uh, over here on the right, you're going to see like the, t the the image size at the top. This is actually a very small file. 2.23 megabytes is a small file. Um, your camera these days, uh, even on your phone, is going to take a much larger photograph than this. Uh, so it's important that you take a look at your total image size. And then turn your attention to uh, the width, the height, and resolution of the image, right? Right now, the resolution is set to 300, and width and height is, you know, two, about two and a half by three and a half. So, um, you know, remember, 300, that's enough for a professional print job, uh, but it's a very small file. Uh, you know, two inches by three inches, maybe that's enough. Maybe it's just a very small part of a page uh, that's going to be printed uh, professionally. Well, uh, I just need to make a small print in-house on an inkjet desktop printer. And those printers can get away with resolutions that are lower. They use technology that doesn't require as high a resolution. So I could set this resolution to 150, and that would make a decent enough print. Now, when resample is on, and this is resample is usually on when you first open the image size dialog box, right? Uh, you'll notice when resample is on that the resolution is not linked with the width and the height, right? Uh, only the width and height are connected uh, because we're you know we're basically wanting to keep our proportions. Um, uh, the same regardless of if one of these changes. The other will change proportionally with it, so they're linked. All right, so if I wanted to um, increase um, the height of this image to five inches, you're going to notice up here uh, when I did that, that my image size increased from two and a, like two and a quarter megabytes to 8.87 megabytes. It's really jumping in file size uh, when I do that. And remember, like, there's only so much you can do with 
um, bitmaps in terms of increasing their size. Uh, once you kind of go beyond doubling the size, you're going to get really diminishing returns and the image is going to suffer. It'll look, you know, kind of not as crisp, not as precise. Um, you're better off going and get, getting a better photograph at a higher resolution. But you can get away with small increases in size. Um, so, um, so that's with resample on, right? Uh, resolution is independent from width and height. So if I change the width and the height, uh, it's going to increase the file size, right? Or decrease it, right? Uh, usually you don't have those same problems. Like when you're decreasing a file size, you're not going to worry too much about losing quality. It's only when you're increasing it really that you have to worry too much about it. So, uh, but what I want to do is I have more resolution than I need. I'm just going to print this thing on a desktop printer so I can get away with the resolution as low as 150 and be fine. So what I'm going to do is take resample off right? And that way, I'm going to like reduce the resolution from 300 to 150. You'll notice now that resolution and the width and the height are all linked together. So if I change one, the other two change proportionally. So I just reduce the resolution from 300 to 150. And you'll notice that the width and the height increased right? From two and a half by three and a half. Now it's like five by seven, roughly. All right. So there you have it. Um, resample. It's very important that you understand what happens when it's on and what happens when it's off. Uh, this time we're leaving it off. We're trading higher resolution, reducing it to lower resolution, and thereby increasing the width and height. You'll notice that the image size hasn't changed. When resample is off, you're not increasing or decreasing. You're not adding anything or throwing anything out. You are just keeping it the same, trading one um, element for another, right? I'm trading resolution down so I can increase width and height with, without doing any damage to the image. Okay, so there we have it. All right, so the next thing we need to do is take a look at the... Uh, the values in this image. And uh, one quick way to do that is with a histogram. If you go to the window menu, you can click on histogram and you'll see a graph of all the values and, and, and colors in this image. So um, right away, I can tell uh, in this image, I've got a lot of kind of darker mid-tones, right? And very few highlights. Uh, if you, the way that you read this is everything to the left is the, you know, this is the dark end. These are the midtones in the middle. These are the highlights on the right. You're going to notice reading this graph that there aren't a lot of really dark darks or really bright highlights, um, right? There's, there's a gap, uh, on either end of our histogram, right? So that's important to note. Um, that's something we're going to have to correct because normally with photographs, you want them to have a, a wider range of values, dark, darks, bright highlights, uh, just the right amount of midtones in between. So, um, that's something we're going to have to fix the values in the image. All right. So, um, now that we kind of have a, an idea of what's going on here, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not making changes to anything unnecessary. And in this case, the crop on this thing is awful. So we're going to have to fix that first. So you get the, hit the C key on the keyboard. That's a shortcut for the crop tool. And you'll see a bounding box show up around your image. And you can click on these like sides and corners uh, to adjust the crop. Now, uh, this is really important. If you want to rotate the thing, you bring your cursor outside of that crop box and, and your cursor will turn into a rotation um, symbol. And then you can click and drag and you'll see the grid shows up and you can kind of align your crop tool, your crop 
box to your photograph. All right, so I'm just adjusting the sides and the corners until it's nice and even. There are tools up in the uh, the the property bar at the top that'll help you too. Like there's a there's a straighten option. Like there's a tool that you can click and drag to straighten things. Uh, you can set a ratio, right? Certain uh, dimensions, uh, or you can or you can type in exactly what dimensions you need it to be. If you wanted this to be exactly four by six, you could type those dimensions in. So that you've got options up there too. Uh, one nice thing about the crop box is it it uses the rule of thirds. So if you're ever like concerned about compositional issues, you can get the crop tool out and just kind of click on the image and see if your focal point is at one of those intersecting thirds. Uh, can be really handy. Anyway, once you've got the crop set the way that you want it, hit the return key on the keyboard or or hit the commit edits checkbox up here or double click inside which is what I normally do. Oh, and it looks like, see, I missed a little bit on the edge here. I'm going to correct that. There we go. Oh, and I got it a little more on the bottom too. You got to, you have to really have good eyes to do this stuff. My eyesight's going. Okay, there you have it. So it's cropped up. It's looking better. Okay, so we need to turn our attention to, um, getting the values in the image right. A lot of adjustments can be made in the image menu in Photoshop. Image adjustments. And there's a whole list of adjustments that you can use to improve an image. Brightness contrast, levels, curves, exposure, color corrections, uh, specialty things like inverting, uh, posterizing threshold, etc. All sorts of um, things that can help you um, achieve your like, the look that you want for this photograph. Uh, the, the problem is when you when you do that here in the image menu uh, for adjustments, you're making a permanent change to the actual pixels. And so if we're trying to do less harm uh, to the image uh, and you know essentially uh, keeping our options open, uh, what I'd like you to do instead is try to use adjustment layer. So you go to the, to the bottom of the layers panel and there's um, an adjustments um, button down here. And I can choose a lot of those same adjustment options are here as a layer instead of a permanent change to the pixels. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is um, modify uh, the values and get a, a little more darker darks, some brighter highlights. And so I'm going to choose levels this time. A little later, I'm going to show you curves, which I think are much better, um, more forgiving way to adjust values. But today we're going to focus on levels, which is really handy. Now, um, as soon as you add an adjustment layer, and it, and it tells you here that it's a levels adjustment layer, uh, you're going to notice up above that there's a properties panel that is associated with whatever uh, adjustment layer you've got active, that properties panel will change in accordance to um, that uh, adjustment and give you options for it. In this case, uh, I see in my levels, let me pull that down a little bit so you can see, um, it's very similar to my histogram, right? It shows me that there's a gap in values. Uh, like there aren't a lot of really dark darks. There's a gap here at the very uh, high end. So there aren't a lot of really bright highlights, but a lot of kind of darkish midtones and a few uh, kind of moderate highlights here. So I'm going to try to improve this. Uh, one simple way that you can do this uh, is by clicking on these sliders in the properties uh, panel and pulling like this slider represents the darkest dark in the image like this is the darkest you can make it so right now it's set um, way down here I'm going to pull that slider to the right so that it meets my graph and that means that what was formerly kind of a darkish gray is now going to become black right? Uh, and you'll notice in the image that I've got some 
much darker shadows now. All right, so highlights over here. I'm going to click on that bright slider, drag it to the left so that it meets the values in my graph, right? And now my, um, uh, I'm getting an error message for my system, sorry. Um, so uh, now I've got a, a much wider range of values. Now, midtones, there's a slider for the midtones. If I decide, you know, this thing is kind of a little on the dark side, I can pull that slider um, one direction or the other. In this case, I'm pulling it to the left to increase the highlights a bit, right? See, uh, if I move the midtone uh, away from the, the, uh, the white um, highlight slider, I'm increasing the areas of the the area of the highlights and decreasing the shadows. Makes sense. All right. So there you have it. So I'm just adjusting these a bit until I see like the the kind of contrast that I'm looking for. Okay. Few more highlights will help. Okay, so there you go. Now I have an adjustment layer where I'm increasing the contrast in the image, pushing the darks darker, the highlights brighter. Okay, so let's um, uh, take a, a quick break um, and uh, in part two, uh, we're going to turn our attention to uh, getting that color just right. Okay, so more in a moment.